2022 was a year of extremes in the real estate market. It sure was. We saw some of the most extreme gains in housing prices during the pandemic market. And then we saw those gains seemingly evaporate with the sharpest increase in interest rate hikes we've seen in over 30 years. So as with the start of every year, the million dollar question is, what is going to happen to house prices in the upcoming year? In today's video, we wanna take a look at where housing prices are right now, what the potential is for increases or decreases over the next 12 months, what would need to occur for those scenarios to take place, and ultimately what we think are the most likely scenarios. So let's start at the beginning. Where are we right now? From the peak of the market until today, we've seen house prices fall on average 25% across the Durham region. Now on the surface level, this looks like a welcome change to the market, right? Housing prices are becoming more affordable. Well, yes, but not exactly. House prices have decreased dramatically over the past 12 months, but these decreases have been directly tied to the increases in interest rates. In fact, they've been so directly tied that they are almost exact mirrors of each other. Now we made a video last week talking about affordability. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But just to summarize, if you purchased a home at the peak of the market for the average sales price and had the average interest rate at that time, your monthly payments would actually be the same if you purchased a home now with lower average sales price and higher interest rates. So what does this mean? Well, it means that even though house prices have come down dramatically, what you are paying, AKA your monthly affordability hasn't changed at all. And what that tells us is house prices have only really been affected by the increases in interest rates and we haven't addressed the underlying issues of supply and demand. So with that said, what are the arguments to be made for prices going up or coming down in 2023? We're gonna take a look at a few scenarios. Scenario one, let's talk about prices going up. In order for this to happen, we will need to see a stabilization of interest rates along with an increase in buyer demand and or a decrease in the amount of supply that's coming to the market. Now we've already seen the supply for the year start slow, but that's pretty typical for the January market. And as we approach what's traditionally referred to as the spring market, it'll be interesting to see what happens to inventory levels at that time. Now regarding buyer demand, signs are pointing to stability through 2023. We have already started to see buyers coming out, whether it's open houses or booking showings to view properties, at a pretty surprising rate for the start of the year. Now the money question is whether or not these are serious buyers and if they will be willing to compete against each other if inventory levels remain low. And recently we've seen instances where homes are selling with multiple offers and selling for above asking price, but this certainly isn't the norm and it's not as common as it was in 2021. So let's move to scenario number two, prices decrease. With a lull in inventory over 2022, there's an argument to be made that there is a pent up supply of housing ready to hit the market in spring. If this creates a flood of inventory that spreads buyers thin, there's an argument to be made that house prices will fall further because buyers aren't forced to compete against each other. Alternatively, listings are gonna be competing against each other for those buyers. Additionally, the Bank of Canada has made their intention to hold up rates through most of 2023 quite clear. Assuming this keeps cost of living up, buyers may not feel that they're in a position to make a move in 2023, which could further soften demand. Also important to note that with these potential price decreases, we would actually see movement in housing affordability, meaning that prices would be changing independent of the interest rates. And scenario three, stability. And I know this one is hard to believe, but there used to be a time where house prices didn't jump from extreme to extreme. Could we potentially be headed toward that time again? In order for that to happen, we would need to see activity remaining more or less consistent as it has been over the past few months. Additionally, with increases in the spring and fall markets, we would need to see buyer demand and supply hitting the market offset each other. Partner those with stability through interest rates in 2023, and I think there's a legitimate argument to be made that house prices hold more or less flat. So what's a likely outcome? Well, it's hard to say. Purely based on affordability metrics, it seems like there's some more room to come down. With that said, continuous increases in population and immigration here in the GTA are keeping upward pressure on the market. We think for the most part, 2023 will be a year of relative stability for house prices here in the GTA. 
assuming that in the spring and fall market, supply and demand remain relatively equal. If there is a slight increase to supply, we could see prices dip slightly. Conversely, if the Bank of Canada decides to decrease interest rates in the back half of the year, we might start to see an uptick in the market to round off 2023. That said, for the most part, we're expecting stability and more of a balanced market in 2023 with the potential for some decreases in certain communities. Now that's just what we think and we of course would love to hear what you think as well. So leave us a comment down below and let us know and let's get a conversation started. If you like this video and you want to see more, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and like this video as it will help get it out to more people who want to view this content. And as always, thank you so much for watching.